Our second learning objective is to learn how to compute return on investment, or ROI, and show how changes in sales, expenses, and assets will affect our return on investment. An investment center's performance is often evaluated using a measure called return on investment, or ROI. Our ROI is simply defined as our net operating income divided by our average operating assets. Our net operating income is income before taxes, and it's sometimes referred to as earnings before interest in taxes, or EBIT. Our operating assets include cash, accounts receivable, inventory, plant and equipment, and all other assets that we're holding for operating purposes. Net operating income is used in our numerator because our denominator only consists of operating assets. And typically in the denominator, we'll use average operating assets for the year. That'll be our beginning assets plus ending divided by two. DuPont pioneered the use of ROI, return on investment, and recognized the importance of breaking down and looking at the components of ROI, namely our profit margin and our asset turnover. So our ROI is net operating income divided by our average operating assets. Our profit margin, or sometimes referred to as margin, is our net operating income divided by sales. And our asset turnover is a measure of how efficient we are at using our assets to generate sales, net sales divided by average operating assets. And if we multiply our profit margin by our asset turnover, we get our ROI. Let's consider a business such as Walmart. It's typically characterized by a fairly low operating profit margin. Remember their key line, low price is always, you know you can get a good deal on things at Walmart and avoid very much markup. And Walmart's characterized because of its low margins, it has very high turnover. We can buy anything and everything in Walmart. Recently I read that over 10% of all uh, sales at the retail level are made in a Walmart store in this country. They sell groceries, they sell homeware, they sell, provide banking services. You can get healthcare services at a Walmart. They provide automotive services. Whatever you want, you can find it at Walmart. And whenever you go to Walmart, they're typically open 24 hours a day and usually fairly crowded. Let's take another business at the opposite tack from Walmart, a jewelry store. Jewelry stores are characterized by having very high profit margins, a lot of markup, but also by fairly low asset turnover. They have a large asset base and it doesn't turn over very quickly. And in looking at our formula for our ROI, we could see that anything we could do to improve our profit margin or improve our asset turnover would likely increase our return on investment. One of the problems is we're going to find that typically when we do something to try to improve turnover, we tend to hurt our profit margins. And we tend, when we do things to improve our profit margins, we tend to reduce our asset turnover. What would happen if we had a sale? Well, if we have a sale, we're going to try to sell more merchandise. So our asset turnover, sales divided by assets, would increase because we still have the same amount of assets, but we're now selling more of our product. Typically, though, how do we have a sale? We have a sale by marking things down. And as soon as we mark down our prices, we find our profit margin decreases. So we can try to boost our ROA by having a sale, but on the flip side, we're going to probably have to pay for it with a lower profit margin. Another strategy might be to uh, try to boost our operating profit margin. We could try to raise our prices or cut our costs. We could spend less money on advertising. We could spend less money on customer service. We could use lower quality, lower cost components. All of those things would tend to raise our profit margin, but in the long term, it would come at the expense of a lower sales and we would see our asset turnover drop. The key to being a successful manager is finding things that we can do that will both raise our profit margin and raise our asset turnover. If we can raise both our profit margin and our asset turnover, we can boost our ROI. Or if we can raise either one of them individually without causing a decrease in the other. So again, there are three ways to increase our ROI. The first two improve, involve improving or increasing our profit margin. That would be to um, increase our sales and selling prices and reduce expenses. Or if we can reduce our assets, we will improve our asset turnover. 
So those are three steps that managers can pursue to try to boost our return on investment. Let's look at an example for the Regal company. It reported net operating income of 30,000, average operating assets of 200,000, sales of 500,000, and operating expenses of 470,000. What is Regal's ROI? And again, our ROI is our margin times our turnover. And we can see from that formula, when we multiply them together, the sales would essentially drop out and we'd be left with our net operating income divided by our average operating assets, which is our ROI. Well, Regal's profit margin is 6%. Its asset turnover is 2.5. So 6% times 2.5 gives us a ROI of 15%. And we could have calculated that directly by taking our net operating income of 30,000 and dividing it by the 200,000 of average operating assets. Alaska Services Company, a division of a major oil company, provides various services to the operators of North Slope oil field in Alaska. Alaska had net operating income of $900,000, sales of $10 million, and average operating assets of $5 million. Compute the profit margin, asset turnover, and ROI. Our profit margin is our net operating income of $900,000 divided by $10 million in sales, or 9%. Our asset turnover is our $10 million in sales divided by our $5 million in average operating assets, or 2. Our ROI, then, is our profit margin of 9% multiplied by our asset turnover of 2, so our ROI is 18%.